Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody doing today? Welcome, welcome to the view from my vantage point. Hey, Renee Tover, glad you're here. Thanks for being here early, on time, ready to go. We're gonna give everybody a chance to get signed in. Uh, for those of you that, uh, that haven't participated in our vantage point uh, software live, YouTube lives before, my name is Daniel and I will be uh, your host for today. We're gonna dig into some very uh, relevant hot topics related to the markets. Uh, we're gonna be talking about how to use generative AI uh, like chat GPT in the stock market. So I think today's gonna be a great session. Uh, glad to see that everybody is getting signed in. I see a lot of people jumping into the room right now. As you know, this is a YouTube live, so it's a live event. I'm keeping my eye on the chat box, making sure that our technology is working okay. I can answer your questions on the fly. I've got some uh, my support team behind me in case I missed your question because sometimes it gets it gets pretty uh, pretty active in here. Hey, Lane, how's it going? Our president, Lane Mendelson, in the room. Glad you're here. Um, hey, Tanya. Glad you are here. Happy you're here to learn too. Looks like we've got a lot of people uh, jumping in right now as we speak, so I'm going to get started. You know, I, I want to I want to dive into the details and make sure that everybody here, everybody that's coming, everybody that's involved in today's session, you know, gets some questions answered. You know, some of the questions I, I get a lot uh, around artificial intelligence are related to things like ChatGPT and, and a lot of those other programs that are out there and available. So I figured let's uh, let's talk about it today in today's session you know um, uh, there's a lot of value in just understanding what's available and understanding you know what what's at your disposal so hey Roland Tom glad you're here all right Michael good looks like everybody's getting signed in let me just uh, uh, change my screen a little bit so that everybody can can really understand what we're going to be digging into today again if you've just joined my name is Daniel uh, I'm part of vantage point AI and um, we're going to be spending some time talking about artificial intelligence today and, and learning how you can apply uh, generative AI, like everything you've been hearing about related to ChatGPT and so many other programs out there, to the actual stock market. To the actual stock market. But before we do that, before we do that, I do have a question. If you're in here and you're in the room, and you're interested or you're in the markets or you're trading the markets or you're learning and reading about artificial intelligence, do me a favor, go to the chat box really quickly and hey Leon, and tell me, in your words, what is generative AI? Define it for me. And no answer is a wrong answer, right? This is a, a, a live conversation, a learning opportunity. There's no judgment here from my perspective, just understanding I'd like to understand a little bit more from your perspective. When somebody says generative AI or chat GPT, that, that model, that idea around artificial intelligence, uh, what does that mean to you? Define it for me in the chat box and help me understand. Um, <laughs> hey, Pat, hey, Pat. Pat says you've been doing AI before. It was cool. <laughs> uh, thanks, my friend. I appreciate that. But, but and, and for everybody that's here, we've got a lot of people signing into the session right now, uh, whether you're watching it live. By the way, if, if you just caught this session and you're not signed up for the Vantage Point uh, AI YouTube page where you can get reminders of these sessions, do that. Subscribe to the Vantage Point AI uh, YouTube page and anytime we have a live session like this, it'll come up and remind you, right? Uh, good. Uh, good. So, you know, looking at the looking at the comments, just trying to understand where everybody's at from a from an artificial intelligence standpoint. David says narrative language data using codes. You know, that's specific to Chat GPT, right? That narrative narrative language, but that narrative language is being created from a generative AI, right? Predictive model for stock trading behavior. Tom, that's an interesting one. We'll dig into that. Predictive data analysis says Roland. Okay, so. Getting some, some answers rolling in now. When I say generative AI, uh, what does that mean to you? That's the question on the table, right? AI tries to solve a question. There you go, Pat. Great way to look at it. I like, I like these answers. And that's okay, Carmen, whether you have experience or not, it's really just understanding what's available and what's out there in the markets. 
uh, and available for people to use. Let me give you some definitions from, you know, uh, some some other other places that I think may be uh, maybe maybe helpful for you. Right. Uh, before we do that, just a quick reminder: we are talking about trading today, and trading does involve risk. Uh, you shouldn't be trading with money you can't afford to lose. That's why trading capital is usually called risk capital, right? You got to have good money management because there is no perfect solution. Uh, we're going to be digging into the details today related to the artificial intelligence and the financial markets. I may even share some user experiences with you from, uh, you know, the chat box or other places. I'm not sharing those with you to say that you're going to perform just like them or that their results uh, are perfect. They may be atypical results, but I do like to share with you what other people have said. All right. Uh, so, so again, defining that question is what is it? Here's a couple of definitions for you from IBM, from IBM. IBM says generative AI refers to deep learning models that can generate high quality text, images, and other content based on the data they were trained on. Think about that for a second. Think about that for a second, right? It refers to deep learning models that can generate high quality text, images, and other content based on the data they were trained on. That is IBM's definition of generative AI, all right? Moving on down the line, these are some big names. These are some big names you're probably familiar with, right? NVIDIA, generative AI models use net neural networks to identify the patterns and structures within existing data to generate new and original content, right? So. Now we're talking about, so far we've heard deep learning models, we've heard neural networks to identify patterns and structures within existing data to generate new content. Uh, that's from NVIDIA, right? Um, Accenture, rather than simply analyzing or classifying existing data, generative AI is able to create something entirely new, including text, images, audio, synthetic data, and more. That's from Accenture, right? So we've got some big names here, we've got some big names talking about generative AI, and they're, they're all pretty much saying the same thing, including Investopedia says generative AI or generative artificial intelligence is a form of machine learning that is able to produce text, video, images, and other types of content and more. All right. So we've got some big names here. We've got some well-known names defining generative AI. So I think we can look at these definitions and come to a conclusion as a group and say, all right, generative AI is a computer technology that uses neural networks, deep machine learning models to analyze existing data, to find patterns, to find information that it can then use to generate something new, whether it's text, images, pictures, doesn't matter what it is. If I look at these big, huge companies uh, defining generative AI, um, they're all saying basically the, the same thing, right? We're all saying the, basically the same thing, which means as, um, as a trader, as somebody that's interested in the stock market, that sounds like something that is interesting to me and probably interesting to you, meaning, if you can use computer technology, if you can use deep machine learning neural networks to, to create data that is new based on massive amounts of data, that could help me in the stock market. And for those of you that are Vantage Point users, you know what Vantage Point is capable of. For those of you that, that don't, understand this. Knowing what the market is expected to do with a high degree of accuracy based on generative AI models is a huge advantage. It's a huge edge in my opinion, right? And the benefit of these sessions that, you know, the view from my vantage point sessions is that I can give you a perspective that maybe you don't have, you're not aware of, or you, you've heard of, you just don't know a lot about. My perspective on this is that generative AI is a huge advantage in the stock market, in the futures market, Forex, uh, with ETFs, cryptocurrency, if you can utilize it to generate to generate information that is valuable, right? Now, before we dive into that, before we dive into that, I wanna give you a little more background information because I think it's important that everybody understands what's out there, what's new, and what's being talked about. Generative AI, the narrative model, narrative language model that you hear in ChatGPT and all these other programs that are using data, 
massive amounts of data to find hidden patterns, relationships, analyze that data to create, to generate something new. It's big talk right now, big talk. But how long has it been around? Let's talk about that for a second. How long do you think this kind of analysis has been available and around? We've heard about it quite extensively for what? Uh, generative AI specifically, maybe the last six months, year or so, right? Well, would you be surprised to know that according to MIT, deep learning uh, goes back for uh, 70 years. <laughs> 70 years. Now, obviously, that's the earliest models of it. Um, you know, over the past 10 years, MIT says the best performing artificial intelligence systems, such as Google's latest automatic translator, resulted from a deep uh, from a technique called deep learning, deep machine learning, right? Um, and what's interesting about it is that deep machine learning is what produces the generative AI process, right? Deep machine learning, according to MIT, is a new name for approach called neural networks. And neural networks have been going in and out of fashion for more than 70 years. Neural networks were first proposed in 1944. So what MIT is saying is that neural networks turned into deep machine learning, and I'll tell you why in just a second, and then deep machine learning got renamed and classified as generative AI because it can create something new. Ha, huh. well that's, that's I, I bet a lot of people don't realize that that is the case. MIT, Carnegie Mellon, these are the birthplaces of artificial intelligence, right? And they're saying that generative AI comes from deep machine learning. Deep machine learning comes from neural networks and neural networks conversations got started in, in 1944. So although there is new technology out there, and hopefully everybody understands what I'm saying here, although there's new technology out there that is extremely powerful and can certainly help you, it's, it's something that has been talked about, it's been used, it's been applied, it's been perfected, it's been tested, it's been retested and reclassified and renamed for decades and decades and decades, which means it's time tested, right? It's proven to, to be something that is, is valuable. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about what neural networks are in deep machine learning because machine learning is, you know, what neural networks turned into. Neural networks, you know, predated machine learning, which is now generative AI. We're obviously getting deep into the weeds here, but I think it's valuable to understand where this has come from and what it is. So what is machine learning? It's the ability to train a computer software to make predictions based on data. Generative AI uses machine learning algorithms. You see, machine learning is the ability to, to program a computer to do those predictions, create those predictions, and then that output is that generative AI. Well, neural network is a neural network is a type of model based on human brain. It, it processes complex information and makes predictions. This technology allowed generative AI to identify patterns in training data and create new content. So neural network allowed generative AI to do what it does. Machine learning is what generative AI is based off of. Now we're starting to see the connections. Hopefully we are. If, you, if this is making sense to you, do me a favor. Obviously, I'm providing a lot of information here. It's, it's, maybe it's information you've heard before. Maybe it's new information. But if you could go to the questions box, let me know if it's valuable information. If it's, if it's giving you something you either hadn't thought about, seen before, or heard before, or realized, before, let me know in the chat uh, in the chat box. Get involved in the conversation. Um, hey, Roland, thank you for that. Get involved because the key here is I want to I want to provide everybody here with an, a perspective. Maybe a perspective you didn't have before. Maybe you had one that you're getting more confident about, and that is using artificial intelligence in the financial markets. Thank you, Alicia. I see that it's 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 good information for you and hopefully everybody else that's involved in this. In this uh, in this live today, always valuable to have conversations like this, in my opinion. So, all right. So let's now that we know now that we know that machine learning, uh, generative AI is out there. How how can you use it, and what it, how long it's been out there, and where it comes from? How can you use it on the stock market, right? Well, uh, good question, Tom. Tom's question is, what's the value add of generative AI over machine learning? What are the limitations of machine learning? You know, the value add of generative AI over uh, machine learning is that machine learning is the ability to train a computer to do something to make predictions. You can train it, right? 
Generative AI is then to use that training to generate a new piece of information that didn't exist in that trained data, right? So the key here is how can you use it in the stock market? Well, let's look. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if I go in right now, right now, and I go into, um, uh, let's see, Ask AI. This is uh, Open AI right here on my phone. Look, I'll show you guys right here on my phone, and I say, what is the expected high price of Apple stock? Right? If somebody is is saying, hey, you know what, you know what? Maybe I'm trading Apple. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I maybe I'm in Apple, and I and I want to know where Apple could go. That's a valuable question, right? How high could Apple go tomorrow? Everybody that's in the markets, everybody that is here today, that's probably a question you'd want to know the answer to, right? Well, when you put that into an AI program like ChatGBT or OpenAI or any of those programs out there, here's the answer that you usually get. As an AI language, and I'm just reading this right off the screen. As an AI language model, I cannot predict the future performance of the stock market or provide financial advice, right? The price of Apple stock, like any other stock, is determined by market forces of supply and demand, as a wide as well as a wide, wide range. Easy for me to say, of economic uh, data. That it says I can't predict it, right? The generative AI, the ChatGPT, the narrative language model that is that is so powerful, and people are talking about, can't provide you that information. So the question is, is it possible? The answer to that is yes. And as a matter of fact, the answer to that is at Vantage Point AI, we've been doing exactly that. And I'm gonna show you some of that today, doing exactly that for decades. Since 1991, we've been utilizing neural networks, machine learning, deep machine learning, multi-layer machine learning, whatever you wanna call it, to create and generate predicted market data like the potential high price of Apple for tomorrow. As a matter of fact, some of the stuff we're going to dig into today, the generative AI that I want to show you today that the Vantage Point is utilizing can predict the trend direction, right? Uh, when a trend is expected to reverse, so reversal points, uh, things like the high, potential high, the potential low of stocks, ETFs, markets, it's trend strength and momentum. I mean, stop and think about that. If you can use generative AI to predict some of the things on the screen and you're trading against traders that don't have that tool at their advantage, I would say that's a major edge. So today's, today's session is designed to educate you on what is out there, educate you on how to use it, how to deploy it so that you as a trader can start to apply this kind of information to the markets. And if you're already, by the way, if you're already thinking about where this can go and how this can help you and you wanna talk one-on-one, -on -one, um, you can go to vantagepointforecast.com. That's vantagepointforecast.com uh, and get you know some, some, some more information one-on-one. -on -one. But today what I wanna dig into is how the heck do you predict, how do you generate all of this market data using neural networks and artificial intelligence, deep machine learning, right? Generative AI, that's what we're talking about today. So let me flip my screen really quickly. I am going to bring up Vantage Point and I wanna spend the rest of our time right here in the Vantage Point software digging through uh, the details, right? Uh, hey, Just the Grace, I appreciate that. Let me see. Uh, uh, uh. Yep. So it sounds like, Grace, you need a little help understanding what's going on in the markets. Uh, appreciate that, we'll reach out to you, absolutely, you know? Uh, hey, David, good question. Good question. I agree with you. That would be great, knowing the, the overall market. Here's a good example. We were talking about how the generative AI in the chat model says I can't predict that information. We were talking about how the models are saying, you know, it can't, it, it can't predict financial data. Well, right now on the screen, what everybody can see is Apple. And you can see the date range goes to 627, that's today. This updated at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time last night. As a matter of fact, before we dig into the high price, because I, you're gonna see something that uh, is, is pretty powerful, right? Pretty powerful, and this, it, before anything is generated, let's talk about what the deep machine learning is capable of doing, what the neural networks can do. 
I'm gonna open up the properties for Apple and the reason I wanna show you the properties on Apple is because I wanna show you what this AI is actually doing. Here's a screen. If you've got Vantage Point software or you're new to the Vantage Point organization or you don't have the Vantage Point software, it's extremely important that you understand the details within what you're seeing on the screen right now, right? In the middle of the screen, there's that stock Apple. And remember the same question that I asked the chat GPT models or open AI models, or, you know, uh, I think it was ask AI. The same question that I ask, I can ask vantage point in some way, shape or form, like what's the, the potential high for the next day, right? How it's doing that is that a neural network is looking at Apple and then it's, it's analyzing over 10,000 markets around the world to figure out figure out specifically what is driving the price of Apple. You know and I know that Apple's share price doesn't go up based on what's going on within the four walls of Apple, right? So it's got to go and look, it's got to analyze millions and millions of data points on over 10,000 markets around the world. You see, markets aren't isolated, they're global. We're trading and living in a global uh, marketplace. A lot of you probably know that already if you're part of the Vantage Point family. If you don't, it's safe to say that you believe that competitors' prices can impact Apple's share price. And it, it's safe to say that you know that Apple isn't just here in the United States, right? It's safe to say that there are global influencing factors, international, domestic factors that can change the price of Apple. Well, the only way to figure out what is doing that is to analyze those millions and millions of data points. And that's where, where, where neural networks and deep machine learning come into play. It's impossible, it's humanly impossible for me to analyze millions of data points to figure that out personally, but AI can do it like that. And that's where this artificial intelligence really excels. And in this case, it's figured out that Marvell, which is also a technology company, has an influence on Apple's share price or Morgan Stanley, which a lot of you may not um, you know, have drawn that conclusion yourselves. Or the cues, that one's an obvious one, right? But what about Natural gas, that's a futures market that is influencing Apple's share price, as well as Japanese yen, the euro, right? These are international markets, domestic markets, ETFs, light, sweet, crude oil, uh, currencies, gold. There's so many markets in this diagram that have been found based on deep machine learning, based on neural network processes to influence the share price of Apple. Well, what we believe here, what we've been able to provide to individual traders uh, for since 91 is the fact that once you can figure that out, then you can figure out where Apple is expected to go. Then you can generate data on Apple's stock that is predictive in advance. But this is where it all starts. Being able to use neural networks and deep machine learning to do analysis like this is the beginning of generating data that can be used to predict the markets. And that's why MIT was talking about, you know, uh, neural networks turning into deep machine learning. And by the way, the deep and deep machine learning just means how many layers can be analyzed, how many layers of processing are happening in that. It started with just a single layer and it was just machine learning. And then you add another layer and you get deeper. And now today with the computer computer processing changing so drastically, they can, you can simultaneously run, you know, like 50 layers through a deep machine learning, a deep machine learning model to get to predictive data. That's where the deep comes from. So anyway, let's get out of the weeds, get back into the markets. The key here is there is valuable data that can be found in these hidden patterns and relationships by analyzing those millions and millions of data points and artificial intelligence has that capability. Artificial intelligence, based on what we've talked about today, has been doing it and is doing it for decades. Here at Vantage Point, we have patented, and we've had this patent for quite some time, we have patented the use of artificial intelligence to analyze those patterns, those hidden patterns and relationships, the linear ones, the nonlinear ones, uh, to figure out what is influencing the price of Apple and what influence that can have on Apple as well as over 1,200 individual stocks, 74 different futures markets. There's so many different things that, that Vantage Point AI has the capability to forecast. Look, over here on the left-hand side, really quickly, 
There's 74 individual futures markets in here and 35 individual Forex pairs, you know, hundreds of ETFs. There's 16 stock sectors with over 1,200 individual stocks. So the, the process, the machine learning process that can generate predictive data is powerful and can be used in a lot of different areas. So let me look at the questions box, the chat box really quickly. Um, yep, good, okay. Michael's question is around the accuracy, how far out, you know, the accuracy in the software we're talking about, Vantage Point AI is up to 87.4% accurate, up to 72 hours, up to three days in advance on a host of different data points. And we'll dig through some of those today. Um, you know, and this is, is verified with a white paper study and you can get that right in the chat box. If anybody wants to dig into the minutia on the predictions and the accuracy, there's a link in the chat box you can click on and see a, a most recent white paper that was published on uh, the, the predictions and, and comparing those predictions to standard technical indicators and things like that. It's just, it's just powerful. So again, thank you for, for your interaction and I appreciate it. So once we've figured out what is influencing the share price or the price of the market that we're looking at, it could be the SPY, it could be Apple, and we figured out those inner markets and what is influencing the price, then then we got to figure out the direction and, and other information that can be forecasted on Apple. Here is the forecast on Apple. Everybody's seeing on the screen the actual prediction. For those of you that don't use Vantage Point, let me help you understand what you're looking at. This is the Apple share price and you can see it's over three months of data. Got a pretty long chart on here. Um, and what, what we're looking at is a couple of things. The first one is this blue line. Let me highlight that for everybody. This blue line is running right through the middle of the screen. Why I like talking about this one, because this is a trend predictor. This helps you understand whether the trend is expected to be bullish, bearish, or sideways, right? Well, how do you interpret it? If the blue line is above the gray line and that shaded area is green, that indicates bullishness expected in the trend. Not every day in a bullish trend is an update, by the way. I think everybody probably realizes that. But the overall trend is expected to continue higher if that blue line is above the gray line and that shaded area is green. And you can see for Apple, that's been the, the case for the entire trend from dating way back here to when that blue line first crossed above. This is an example of, of something that was generated from doing analysis with neural networks and deep machine learning on millions and millions of data points related to Apple. It generated the fact that the trend was expected to change direction. Look over here on the left, right here, 3.7 to 3.8. That was the day that the trend reversal was expected based on the artificial intelligence in Vantage Point software. That was several months ago. We're talking over three and a half, almost four months ago. Ever since that trend forecast, and I'm just talking about the blue line right now, ever since that trend forecast, the artificial intelligence has never reversed that prediction. If it did, the blue line would have crossed below the gray line and the shaded area would have turned from green to red. So this is a forecast that comes out at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time every night for those of you that don't use Vantage Point, indicating that there is bullishness. There is bullishness expected in the trend the entire time that this has been going on for the last three months. 6.30 at night, each night, or maybe first thing in the morning before the market opens. I have the benefit of using what the artificial intelligence has generated to help me understand the trend direction in something like Apple. And at 6.30 last night, it said this trend is still expected to continue going higher. It's weakening a little bit because you can see that blue line is flattened out, right? You can see it was going up strong here and then it's flattened out here. That gives me some information around that. And, and it also can help me understand by looking down here at the neural index, whether or not the strength has changed. This green bar is a, a trend strength indicator, if you will. And the fact that it went from green to red that is the AI generating an indicator that says, oh, weakness has moved in. Doesn't mean necessarily down day. It just means that in this trend, in the entirety of this trend, it was very, very strong, very, very strong. And then it turned weak, strengthened back up again for a few days. And then the prediction, this is a prediction for today is expected to be a little bit weaker. All right. Thank you, AI right? <laughs> Thank you for generating that indicator and that information. 
right? Um, hey, Tover, yep, this, you can ask questions here, or of course you can go to vantagepointforecast.com uh, and talk with somebody one-on-one -on -one to ask more questions. You know, just fill that, that link out. We'll drop that link in the, in the chat box as well for anybody else like Tover that wants to dig in a little bit more. But let's dig in right now and just talk about this. The fact that the trend is expected to be higher, but there's some weakening in that trend helps me understand, hey, you know what? I can, I, I can understand that although the trend is expected to be higher, Apple could be a little bit weaker today. Well, let's take it to the next level. What else can the artificial intelligence generate, right? Remember, I don't know if you guys, let me switch screens. Let me show you this slide again, because we were talking about this one, but trend direction, reversals, uh, momentum, highs, lows, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you all of these. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you all of these right now. As a matter of fact, we talked about trend direction, right? We talked about the reversal point that was forecasted back in in March. We're talking about uh, strength of the trend with a predicted neural index. And if anybody forgets the names of these indicators, that's okay. Just ask. I'm happy to to walk walk through them again. But so far, we've talked about several pieces of market data generated from the artificial intelligence, helping you understand where Apple is expected to go. Now let's talk about momentum. Let's talk, here's the momentum down here at the bottom, folks. This is the mo this is where I'm looking from a momentum standpoint. And what this is telling me, what this is telling me by looking at these momentum indicators, i.e. lines, <laughs> right? This is a three day momentum indicator saying momentum is peeling off Apple and has been peeling off since June 13th, meaning some of the momentum is shifting. The shorter term or medium term momentum has been shifting since here. You can see that line started pointing down here. You can see there's been some lower highs being created in the even shorter term momentum. So I've got, I've got three momentum indicators down here, basically a three day predictive momentum, a two day and a one day predicted momentum. When you stop and you think about this, knowing that the trend is, is losing a little bit of steam, but still expected to be bullish, weakness has worked, excuse me, worked its way in, and momentum has shifted a little bit, I, I, I can be confident that Apple's price is still expected to overall go up. I just need to be cautious about the fact that it may be a little weaker today. And the great news, if you're a Vantage Point family member and you use this technology, you had this at 6.30 last night, I had this at 6.30 last night. And knowing that, I can use this predicted high and predicted low. Let me, let me zoom in a little bit. Let me zoom in for you. There you go. Look at this. Every night in the software, the AI has generated this bar. This is a predicted high and a predicted low. And yes, this has been doing this. By the way, I, this question comes up quite a bit. I don't see it in the chat box right now. but. It has been, this technology has been capable of producing this uh, in advance, um, you know, one to three days in advance. In this case, it predicted high and low one day in advance. This has been going since 1991. That's 30, 32 years that this generative AI using neural networks and deep machine learning has been able to produce this information. And I don't know about you, but um, that history, that longevity, that credibility means something in my book. Uh, and in this case, what Vantage Point is saying, look, I can put my cursor right on top of this and you can you can follow my line here. And it says, Vantage Point is saying the high for Apple today is expected to be 187.04. That's what Vantage Point is saying. Uh, let's see, let me just bring up a Google window here. Uh, Apple stock. All right. Uh, Apple high 187.21. Look at that. Within pennies. Within pennies of that. So you're talking about getting within 10, 12 cents of Apple's actual high, 187.04. Look, Apple Apple is is the high is right, right there. Could you imagine knowing within a dime, within a quarter, within 50 cent range on $187 stock every single day where that expected high and low could be? So what Vantage Point is saying here is that there is a range of Apple that Apple could trade within this range today. Where's Apple right now? I didn't I didn't catch that when I looked. Let me bring up that uh, Google window again, if I can find it. Let's see here. I might have lost my Google window, maybe not. Let 
It's live, right? Apple stock. There we go. 187.22. 187.22. So Apple is at 187.22 right now, sitting right there just at that high point. That And guess what? Vantage Point said that that trend is expected to continue higher. The fact it's on the high side of that means from yesterday close, it is up which means the artificial intelligence is again accurate in saying it could go this high and the trend is expected to be up even though it's losing some momentum. That is powerful information generated from the artificial intelligence. And this is, this is an individual stock. It works like this in the market as well. Take a look, look at this. This is the S&P 500, all right? When you stop and you think about the S&P 500, Think about what it would mean to you if you knew with, with any degree of accuracy what the S&P 500 is expected to do in advance. Look, the forecast for the S&P 500 said that the trend is expected to change last week. The weakness that was experienced yesterday was forecasted with the artificial intelligence. You can see there was a fresh crossover indicating a potential reversal. As a matter of fact, the short-term forecast on the SPY indicated a reversal on 620. Since the artificial intelligence said on 620 that the SPY was expected to be down, you can see up to the close yesterday, it went down. Vantage point for, pff, down a, uh, over a percent. Vantage point, last night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, forecasted a potential high in Apple uh, of 433.54. So the fact that Apple's at 434 is not a concern, question, or surprise. That is where Vantage Point was indicating, uh, excuse me, the SPY was expected to be based on these forecasts. And this information is information that is available day in and day out. And when you look at the SPY, let me show you something. I can go into the market details of the SPY, and this is where it shows you which markets are influencing SPY's price. These are different, look, Norwegian, Centerpoint, Okta, there's so many different markets in this list compared to what we saw in Apple. That's because every stock, every ETF, the AI needs to do that analysis. This isn't just a general analysis of the overall markets, it's a specific analysis for whatever asset I'm trying to look at in the software. The AI is doing that analysis. It's generating those predictive indicators. And that's how you can use generative AI to help you get an edge in the financial markets, right? Let me just look at the chat box, see if there's any questions coming through. As you can tell, this is a live session. So if there's a certain, by the way, if there's a certain stock ticker us or a certain asset you wanna look at and you wanna see what the AI generated from predictions uh, last night for today, I'm inviting you to go to the chat box right now and um, put in a ticker symbol, put in put in a stock, uh, a market or futures market or something you may wanna take a look at because again, everybody in today's session learning about how the artificial intelligence works may not have access to it. So I wanna give you the opportunity to, to, to pop in a ticker symbol that we can take a look at and walk through the details. While you're doing that, let me walk through a very simple process that I use in vantage point to, to let the AI guide me, right? Just so we're all on the same page. The first thing I'm gonna do when I get into a prediction um, before we start looking at yours is I wanna look where that blue line is. I wanna understand where the blue line is and what it's expected to do, what it's expected to do for the next trade day. I wanna look at it and understand the blue line's position. If you're taking notes, the blue line is called a predicted moving average and it is predicting the trend, PMA, and it predicts the trend, okay? And the reason I wanna look at that first because I wanna understand whether that trend is expected to be up or down. That's number one. The next thing I do, so that's number one. Number two is I wanna understand whether or not there is strength or weakness at that same time that I got a crossover. If there is strength or weakness, this is this is the called the predicted neural index P N I, and that under that that's predicting strength. Well, if I have a trend prediction and a strength prediction that are in agreement, that's giving me confidence. And then I can go check my momentum indicators. These are called predicted differences, uh, for short P diff. <laughs> right? There's abbreviations for everything. 
and these are predicting momentum. So when these are pointed down at the same time, I know that momentum is bearish on that. When I've got that, I've, I train this for people that don't use vantage point, and that is total confirmation. That is the beginning of the forecast to the bearish side in that sequence. Once, I, once I, that trend is on and it's moving in my direction, all I'm looking for is for that blue line to cross back up to say, yep, that trend reversal is now bullish. And then I can check my next indicator and my next set of indicators to understand whether or not they agree. That sequence, that process to using this kind of generative AI in the financial markets that is patented technology and proven could really give somebody some confidence if they're not overthinking it, if they're not trying to outsmart it or trying to out predict the generative AI, right? It's, it's use the generative AI, it's use the artificial intelligence in vantage point to help you make a, tra a trading decision, a confident trading decision without trying to out -think, out -think it, outsmart outsmart it or out predict it, right? That's the key. All right, now that you've got that sequence down, let's pop through some of these tickers. PLTR, all right, thank you. Uh, Grow to top is asking for PLTR. Pulling that up right now. And this is the updated information. And when you look at this, you can see that we've got three months of data on this chart right now. And you can see that there was a fresh crossover after this. This is a great forecast, by the way. Check this crossover to crossover forecast out. I don't know what, what position you're in, but that, that, that stock moved 57% after the artificial intelligence indicated that there was bullishness expected to happen based on what I just taught you. So grow to top, you were asking for PLTR, hopefully, well, tell me in the chat box, were you able to snag, and this is a hypothetical gain here on, on this, but you can see, were you able to snag the entirety of that trend? Were you able to exit that position with a, a very profitable gain? Because the AI identified the beginning and the end of that trend in advance, and you could have captured basically all of that. I'd love to hear uh, from you in that, because you can see the forecast for PLTR forecasted bearishness 621. That was uh, what beginning of last week. I'm trying to remember the dates here. Let me check my calendar. 621 Wednesday. Wednesday. That's when the forecast was saying on the medium term it was expected to drop. As a matter of fact, if you go check the short term, you can see the forecast was 620. That is the earliest bearish forecast you would have gotten. Grow to top. 620, 621, the AI said, yep, this thing's expected to start dropping. And you can see all those indicators agreed with that. Uh, now, you can see that the blue line is still below, but there is some short-term strength. There's a short-term pop in momentum expected. There's some short-term bullishness expected. Not enough to reverse the trend. Not enough to reverse the trend. But what the AI has generated in this case is a, a, could be an up day. You could see prices 14, 20, and 14, uh, 30. You could see prices move up based on the fact that there is a short term. Look, you see this little spike in this momentum indicator? This is a one day predicted momentum. For three days, it's been saying, oh, oh, there's bullish momentum. And then the neural index said that. So although we don't have enough to reverse this trend in one day, there is an indication here that there is some bullishness happening. And guess what? This stock is bouncing off and creating a new support level right here that was created after this gap. So there, it's got a basis for some sideways or bullishness and the artificial intelligence is telling us that. Um, let me just check the chat really quick, see if you answered my question about that trend. You were asking Grow to Top about PLTR. I don't see that you answered the question yet around the trend, uh, which I have to assume then you didn't capture that 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 uh, almost doubling of the price here from from what nine bucks to 16 bucks or so it's a pretty pretty big move 50 percent i said almost double but you can see what the ai is saying now about this stock so good uh william william gbtc all right and those of you that are involved in in the stock market thinking about crypto but not into crypto here is an etf for you to think about. It's Bitcoin Investment Trust. And what the artificial intelligence forecasted, look, I can zoom in on this, is that GBTC was expected to move higher on 615 on the short-term forecast. 
the earliest the AI was able to say this trend is expected to reverse and change direction on the latest trend was 615. The neural index, let's walk through that sequence that I just trained you. The trend predictor on the, on the one day was uh, bullish. The trend, uh, the strength was bullish on 615 and the momentum indicators were all turned up on 615. That is the earliest forecast, my friend. William, that's when this uh, forecast was expected to, to see this move higher. Uh, GBTC jumped dramatically. You know, the close, as of the close yesterday, roughly this is a hypothetical gain of about, oh, 33% in six trading days. William, when did you grab GBTC to the long side? If you're willing to jump that into the chat, by all means, please do. Uh, always interested in, in where, when, and how the artificial intelligence can enhance what you're doing. Uh, because you can see here, very, very powerful forecast, even on the medium term. And there are different ways to use this information, but even this forecast, you're talking about 20% in five trading days. So no matter how you slice it, the AI is, is powerful in creating some potential gain. I mean, we're looking at, at real forecasts with hypothetical gains here. William, where did you catch uh, GBTC to the long side? Or maybe you didn't catch it yet. Maybe you've been watching it, waiting and wondering. Um, you know, love to hear from you in the chat. You know, as you can see, what happens, a lot of times what happens when we start looking at ticker symbols and, and information, realizing how powerful generative AI is, you know, it starts to get you thinking about why you're not using it, why you don't have it, and why you haven't applied it yet. Or if you are part of the Vantage Point family, maybe you want some help really digging into how this can, can create confidence. You've got some questions. Everybody and anybody can can dive in. Go to vantagepointsoftware.com, fill that out, and we're, or vantagepointforecast, excuse me, vantagepointforecast.com. Fill, fill out that information so that we can we can answer your questions. Uh, Winston, hey Winston, my friend, how are you? How you doing? You doing all right? I've seen, I haven't seen, I don't feel like I've seen your name in a little while, so uh, nice to see you. Let's uh, let's take a look, all right? All right, here we go. Here is Bill. Let's zoom in on Bill. Bill was forecasted to start going down here on six sixteen. That was after the forecast that was forecasted up. Uh, Winston, back here five three. This is when the medium term cross happened. That would have given you the opportunity to catch that gap. Because look, in one day, it went, after that forecast, you had a great opportunity to, in just from one day to the next, generate in, in, intensive gains. And this is the medium term forecast, right? But from crossover to crossover, you can see exactly what this hypothetical gain could have produced, almost 40%. Um, Winston, there you go. Uh, the latest forecast on Bill is that the blue line is below, the neural index is red, but you can see the momentum indicators. Check this out, my friend. The moment, the short-term momentum shifted days ago, maybe a week ago. The medium term has already shifted, and uh, the long term is starting to flatten out. So we've got a momentum shift predicted here. These are predicted momentum indicators. Momentum shift is being predicted here. The strength hasn't jumped in yet. And the predicted high is saying you could see this up over 111. So at this point, from a bearish standpoint, uh, the overall trend is still expected to be somewhat bearish. But you can see there is a momentum shift happening. Doesn't mean that the trend is expected to reverse. But with bullishness in the markets today, we could see this up around that 111, 112 mark. Again, that predicted high and predicted low is designed to give you some goalposts, where to expect prices to be. Um, and you can see based on that uh, and that momentum shift happening, we've got we've got some, uh, on top of a 40% gain, that's uh, <laughs> that's good. Hey, hey, sure, Winston, good. So it sounds like you're long that opportunity and you're, and you're hoping for it to go higher, right? For those of you that are investors, there's a way to use this generative AI to, to really you know, from an investment standpoint, help you understand longer, uh, longer term trends that have a little bit of dips in them. This is called the triple crossover. The triple crossover. And if you got questions about this, by all means, please let me know. Go to vantagepointforecast.com. The link is in the chat and, and let's dig in or give us a call. 
Uh, thank you to our, our support team. Put the phone number right into the chat box. We can talk to you on the phone as well. But what this is saying, what this is saying is that the overall trend for Bill, the stock, B-I-L-L, -L, is expected to be higher. It does have some weakening, but you can see there is nothing red. If I had red saying bearish as an investor, what, let me classify what I mean by as an investor. An investor is usually willing to accept a little bit more drawdown, willing to withstand a little bit more pullback because long term, they see a lot more value in that stock. This triple cross indicator can help an investor understand that situation. Look, this is bearish for sometimes four or five months and then it turns bullish and it could go bullish for a long time. This is an indicator that comes in the Vantage Point software that can help somebody understand as an investor in a stock, whether this is just a short-term pullback because that shaded area is yellow, not red, or a trend reversal from a long-term position standpoint. <clears throat> Excuse me, so we're talking about benefiting day traders, short-term swing traders, <clears throat> longer-term swing traders, position traders, and investors with generative AI. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> Just get a drink real quick. Live session, you can imagine, doing a lot of talking. All right, let's get out on the same page really quick. Let me level with you and maybe you level with yourself. Artificial intelligence and generative AI clearly is not new. How it's being deployed, there's finding new ways to use it. Is it valuable? Yes. Can it help you in the stock market? Not narrative language type chat GBT generative AI. It won't give you any predictive information. But in Vantage Point, Vantage Point is using AI to do global market analysis, intermarket analysis, and then generate predicted prices, predicted trend direction, predicted momentum, predicted strength, and so much more for the stock market, for individual stocks, futures, commodities, and so on. So. Uh, glad we're on the same page. Let's keep on rolling through some of these tickers in here. Uh, Tesla, thank you, Tom. Let's take a look. So Tesla, from a forecast standpoint, you can see there's been some very, very powerful forecasts in Tesla. Here is a bearish forecast, which then at this point turned into a bullish forecast, and then a bearish forecast and a pullback here at this point on Tesla. So vantage point you can see right now on the screen is saying that Tesla could certainly have an update today. Uh, no doubt about it. You can see the predicted high and predicted low right here on the right, 248.07 to a predicted low 235.38. Tesla's high is 247.11 and low 240.85. So it's trading right within that range exactly where the AI indicated it would, and um, dead, probably dead center of that candle right there. But Tom, did, is this something, when you look at this, being able to capture this ginormous move in Tesla, can I use that word? 48% in 35 trading days, a hypothetical trend. You can see if I had, uh, let's say it was one contract, 100 shares I'm controlling of that, you can see that is a substantial gain in one trend thanks to the generative AI. And the forecast on Tesla from a short-term standpoint, check this out. The short-term forecast said Tesla was expected to start pulling back 622, right? The shortest term forecast said 622, which means that is a uh, that is last week. You can see where all of that stuff reversed here, 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 heck, you could call it 623, you could call it 624. You decide when it's it's clear enough to you, but you can see when the AI started indicating bearishness for Tesla. And it wasn't today, right? And it wasn't yesterday, it was last week. Uh, Tom, hopefully that's helpful. I, I don't know what, what you were looking for in Tesla, but looking at that forecast in Tesla, looking at what was possible with Tesla, I think you can see where uh, the AI could have certainly certainly helped all right let me take a look uh let me take a look what else we got in here tesla gdx sure richard there we go oh i missed the button let's, let's try it again there we go all right when i look at gdx 
Here's what I can see on GDX. I've got a lot of sideways stuff going on, my friend. Here's why I say that. Look, the blue line is below, but it's pointed up. That tells me that there is some, some volatility. It's, it's, I call that consolidation. Momentum is shifting. Strength is shifting. Predicted high and predicted low is shifting. So I've got a shift on. The AI is telling me that there is a potential for reversal happening, not necessarily today, but there is potential for reversal happening on the medium term crossover. Um, the long term, the short term's got a little bit more bullishness. The long term has a little bit more bearishness. The triple cross, again, these are all predictive indicators are telling me more bearishness. So there is a lot of uncertainty going on with gold and GDX and the predictive indicators. This, this would indicate if I drew uh, some guardrails for you, I would say uh, these recent lows and these recent highs are where I would expect GDX. It's been in a channel. As a matter of fact, GDX is like gold. It's been in a channel and it's expected to stay in a channel today. Uh, you know, right, right between, call it between 29.50 and, and 30.50. No question about that. And, and that's where I would expect GDX to be based on these predictive indicators, based on what the indicators are saying here. Very well. I'm glad it was helpful. Good, 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 good. Um, Michael, let's see. QQQ. Somebody else was asking for the Qs. Teresa, you were asking for the NASDAQ 100. Let's look at it as the Qs. Uh, there we go. Pop that up. Here is the forecast on the Qs. Very, very powerful bullish forecast. I can't, I just can't help myself. When I see forecasts that are this powerful with the artificial intelligence, look, that's the that's the Q forecast of the upside. And then you get a forecast of the downside a couple of days ago, 623. You get a predicted high and predicted low that says it could go up to 360, 361, 360, 64. So what we're seeing from the Q standpoint is a slight pullback, some slight bearishness. Um, all in all, sideways expectation on the market. The long term uh, bullish triple forecast, tri excuse me, triple. Here's the triple crossover that I was talking about earlier. Triple crossover, in case you're wondering, hasn't been bearish the Qs. This is a long-term forecast since 313. The entire time from 313 to now, the triple cross has been bullish the Qs, meaning the shaded area is green or yellow, right? Green or yellow the entire time. This is all yellow. This is a little bit of consolidation. When the AI can be that powerful and that accurate, just think about that. Let's say you just bought the Qs, right? You put $10,000 into the Qs um, and just let it sit there. As long as that triple cross is hypothetical, but you, you get my point. As long as that sits there, you can see the Qs went from, you know, call it 295 to 365. That's a substantial substantial move move that the artificial intelligence and this is why you know this is why these sessions in my opinion are so valuable because we can spend time as a group really understanding how is the artificial intelligence predicting the trend direction how is it understanding and able to determine time reversals how is how is the predicted high and predicted low beneficial or momentum and strength you know that's why i love doing this session and thank you for being involved in this you know, and, and, and asking questions, you know, that's really the key. So let's see what else we got. HPA, PA, APA, Apache. Okay, let's pull that up. Ooh, in a channel sideways, not nothing, nothing really doing for Apache. You know, when I look at Apache, the first thing that I see is that the artificial intelligence has been forecasting uptrend, downtrend, basically Apache's price profile since March has been in a major channel, which means I'm not expecting anything different. There's a little bit of bearishness from a trend, strength, but momentum has some bullishness and consolidation happening. Predicted high and predicted low has some bullishness happening. You can tell I'm running through this a little bit faster, but I would expect Apache to be right there at 3334. And you can see it right here with the artificial intelligence. If you just look right here, you can see there is uncertainty. The gray bar has some green in it, the predicted Short-term differences bullish with some other ones flattening out. There's a, whoop, getting a phone call here. Let me just hang that up. Sorry about that. You can see there's a lot of activity going on related to Apache and it's all sideways, right? So who was asking for Apache? Uh, Joseph, 
Joseph, uh, my opinion on what the vantage point is saying around Apache's trend is nothing doing, my friend. Me wants Lulu. All right, let's go Lulu. Me is their name, right? That's what they put in here. All right, so here's Lulu. Looking at Lulu, there's been some great forecasts on Lulu. There was a huge gap up that pulled back. Uh, vantage point, you can see, is indicating some consolidation on Lulu. The blue line is sitting on top of the gray line. That, that green is kind of pinched off to sideways. The predicted high and predicted low saying sideways, weakness, consolidation, consolidation, weakness. So there, again, more sideways, more channeling expected for Lulu. There's a little bullish opportunity in here from this forecast. You know, if, if somebody was using this forecast and took advantage of this trend in Lulu, because this would be the, the crossover point, there's a little bit of a gain here, right? Three and a half percent or three and a quarter percent. That ain't too shabby no matter how you slice it in my book. But the current forecast for Lulu, again, zooming into the current forecast is that Lulu is expected to be sideways based on what this is saying, right? You can see that all this stuff here down let's let's simplify it sideways sideways down down up down down right so more bearishness than bullishness but consolidation certainly expected on lulu that was for you me for me <laughs> i see why you, you you made your screen name me it, it it's kind of fun to to interact with, <laughs> to interact with uh, let's see, uh, GIS, oh, I missed one earlier, AI. Here's GIS, General Mills. Somebody wanted C3 AI, which is AI, there we go. All right, let's go back to General Mills. Ooh, look at that, fresh crossover on General Mills a few days back, right? Bullishness expected here. The short term says that there's a little bit of bullishness, but the predicted low says today it could go all the way down to 80.75, that's a potential a potential low. So although the trend is expected to be bullish and there is some strength here, let me, where did my pen go? Let's get my pen. The AI in vantage point is saying, oh, here it is, okay. Bullishness from a trend, bullishness from a predicted high, bullishness from a predicted low, the predicted low could go down to 80, 77. Bullishness from the strength indicator, Two of the momentum indicators are indicating bullishness and one is indicating bearishness. So not everything is saying up based on the AI that we've, we're looking at right now. There are more indicators we can layer on top of this, but what I'm showing everybody here is exactly what everybody here can get right out of the box. I say out of the box, default, you get vantage point, you get everything that I'm looking at um, right now on the screen. The longer term forecast on General Mills still has some weakness in the trend and the triple cross still has some weakness in the trend with some consolidation happening. So you short term swing traders, great short term opportunity on uh, General Mills. You can see that happening. It's fizzling a little bit overall, still expected to have some bullishness on General Mills, but not really strong. Uh, and that was for Who was that? Wretch, Wretch, there you go. There you go, I just found your name, sorry about that. Here is uh, C3AI. C3AI had bearishness expected, you can see that. Um, back here, this is the end of the uptrend, 622, it's gone down, down, down. Vantage point is saying today it could go as high as 3387, and it could go as low, or 3374, and it could go as low as 2949. The high is 33.76. Oh, look at that. 33.74, look. Let me show you something. 33.74, and you guys can go look at, if you're in the markets or you wanna go look at c3.ai, that's what Vantage Point predicted for the high at 6.30 last night. The high right now on this stock is 33.76. 33.76, go check it out on your platform. When you talk about AI generating a predicted price at 6.30 at night for the next trade day, and that price is coming through the next day within two cents. Do you think that could help you? Or the fact that this trend was expected to start going down days ago, and it's lost four or five bucks a share since that forecast. I don't, I, I don't know how else to slice it. Uh, from my perspective, the answers to the question that we were trying to answer as a group 
Can generative AI help? Yes. Is it accurate? Yes. Is it forecasting? Is it telling you in advance? Yes. Is it powerful and can it help you be more confident? Yes. Do you know now how to use generative AI like ChatGPT in the stock market? I'd love to answer that for you, but I want you to answer it in the chat box. This is helpful at helping you understand how that kind of AI can be used in the stock market. If that's the case, give me some feedback. Obviously, we've been talking now for over an hour. I didn't realize it's been over an hour, but um, and and my hope is that everybody's got that kind of information. Um, and I'm glad it's been helpful for you from the comments that I'm seeing. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes, Walter, there is an ability to scan for stocks. Matter of fact, I can uh, next our next live. If you're in this session right now. If you're in this session right now and you want to understand how to scan for stocks, um, then by all means, um, I'll do a session here in the future on scanning and how to how to look for opportunities. Um, you know, I'll set that up for our next YouTube live. So look for it. Subscribe to the Vantage Point AI YouTube channel so that you can get reminders of that session. It'll probably be in a week and a half, two weeks or so. We'll do some live scanning here as a group to understand how to utilize the scanner and how to how to dig into the details. Right. Um, it predicts one, two, and three days in advance. Tom, the one day prediction is the predicted high and predicted low. The location of the blue line, for instance, in this case, the fact that the blue line is below the gray line and the shaded area is red, right now that's a two day prediction on the trend. I can change that by going to a long term three day prediction on the trend, which is also bearish. I can also go to a one day prediction on the trend and see that that is bearish as well. So uh, yes, it, it can predict. And, and then the momentum indicators, this is a, a three day momentum, a two day momentum and a one day momentum predictor. So depending on which indicator you're looking at and what indicator the artificial intelligence is generating for you, it can be um, de deciphered out into one, two and three days depending on that. Glad that. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you for your time today. I'm going to I'm going to sign off. I just had the realization we're over an hour. I think it's been a very valuable session. I've enjoyed the interaction. So um, if you're not part of the Vantage Point family and you found some value in this, let us know. Click on the link in the chat. Uh, we'll glad to talk with you, dig into the details or give us a call. Um, the phone number is in the chat as well. If you are part of the Vantage Point family, thank you for being part of the Vantage Point and to everybody. Thank you for letting me give you the view from my vantage point. Hopefully you have a great day. Happy trading.